He took and healed him and let him go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. If you were to take uh, a tour to heaven, or hell, or purgatory, imagine what it would look like, or just imagine you, you visiting these places to see how they look like before you eventually go to any of them. But well, perhaps you wouldn't have to, to imagine that now because a certain poet called Dante in a book he wrote, The Divine Comedy, he tells us of a trip to heaven, hell, and purgatory. Maybe some, someone should try to find out to read that, that book eventually. You see, so he, when he tells us that when he reached the second circle of hell, what he found there was thick darkness. And then there was a perpetual wind uh, that, is, that was roaring and then moaning. Just imagine when there's a serious wind, the noise that, that comes out, this is perpetually in this place. And then he sees like um, a flock of black birds that are carried by the wind, right, up and down. Souls, those birds are the souls that are being carried by the winds up and down. Some are flying singly, some in couples, some were in, in their numbers. They were dashed against the rocky cliffs. And then for these souls like, that were presented by bears, there, were, there was never a moment rest. And their wails and curses pierce this, this, um, this noise of the wind. He tells us that these souls are, this, are those who had given themselves up to all kinds of impurity and had never repented. This is the part of hell, okay? They gave themselves to all kinds of impurity and never repented of, of them. In this life, they permitted themselves to be blown about by the, by the um, um, burst of passion, by the winds of passion, so, and they made no effort to control their desires. So their punishment is to be blown about forever in this black uh, breeze of hell as what a recompense for not controlling their passion here on earth. And then the poet goes to tell us about the mountain of purgatory. He said there, we find those who had sinned against chastity but who had repented and tried to correct their ways. Here, they make amends for their sins because they, they, they couldn't sufficiently um, make, um, remove, pay for all the temporal punishment due to their sins here on earth. So they, they were in the last and the highest um, part of the mountain, and there um, the, the poet maintains that this is the last sin that men get rid of. That is the sin of impurity. And then, what was their, their purifying punishment? He said, from the side of the mountain, the, somehow flames come out from, from a hole, like a, a, a tunnel. And then these this souls leap into this, this fire joyfully because they, they, they know that they, they were good, getting clo closer to God. Of course, it was a fearful sight, but because they are atoning for their sins of impurity, they walked willingly through the flames, and they were singing a hymn to the God of purity, and then the Father of mercy. All right? Though these flames caused intense pain, but there was no injury. They were, they were the very opposite of earthly fires of lust, which caused pleasure 
but also caused injury, the injury of sin. All right? And then, at last, they come to an angel of God. Having passed through this purifying flame, the angel of God, with flaming sword, joyfully sings to them, Blessed are the clean of heart. All right? The, the poet tells us that himself and one other... Um, um, one other, um, one other Greek Greek poet called Virgil must pass through also this this uh, flame to reach the path to that leads to earthly paradise at the top. So there in this place, this poet called Dante he learned with new clearness that true love, unselfish love, dries out mere lust. So we today we come to contemplate or to think about lust which is the third horseman of spiritual death remember some weeks ago we spoke about the seven horsemen of spiritual death and today we are looking at lust it is an immoderate love of fleshly pleasure it is a desire for impure and excessive indulgence it is displeasing to God who expressly forbade it and is nearly always a mortal sin. We see how God punished this sin with the flood. Remember the, the flood of that, uh, the time, during the time of Noah and also with, this, with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. All right? The sin of loss causes uh, the loss of more souls than any other sin. Well, don't mind what Bergoglio will say on this, because according to him, he says that um, the, the sin of uh, impurity is not the worst of all of, of, of sins. See, lust takes various forms and shapes. It is lost purposely and knowingly to cause or to keep impure pictures in the mind, in your mind. Most impurity begins in the mind or imagination. Lust leads to the reading of sensual books and magazines. Lust prompts people to attend movies and objectionable on the objectionable list, X-rated movies. Lust, lust makes people to hear and repeat a provocative or um, arousing stories and talk about um, provoking subject and impure pleasure. <coughs> it leads men and women to seek impure company and it makes people immodest in their dresses, their actions and their very, their very way of walk and talk. Imagine that people who have signed up to promote lust in society, they design clothes that will in, instill lustful thought in others. And those who are who wants to be object of loss for others look at these designs and go and buy them for themselves. You see, all of this contributes to the 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 breakdown in moral in mor mor morality in our society. Lust leads to impurity alone, those who self-abuse, as you call it. It causes some to lead others into sin. When you consider the effects of impurity, they are deadly. It dries out grace, the life of the soul. It creates a dislike for prayer and good works. It weakens faith and dims the spiritual vision those who are who are stuck in this bad habit they they lack they they lose the sense for spiritual things and then of course it inspires beastly selfishness cruelty injustice sometimes not even stopping at robbery and murder all of these are sometimes result of lust all to satisfy one's pleasure. It makes men lazy 
both physically and spiritually, and then it creates a distaste for all religion. It fills the soul with discouragement and despair because what someone would think that, oh no, I'm so used to this sin, there's no hope for me again. That is what loss can make do to someone. It weakens and often destroys someone's health. Of course, you hear of the list of many sins, many um, health associated with impurity and lust. And it breaks up families and homes, fills our prisons and, and, and different places, that, and costs countless millions to taxpayers. And of course, it brings pain and disgrace to both the innocent as well as those who are guilty. All right? So this is something that we should take seriously. But when you consider how terrible this is, what are the helps? How, what weapons can we use to, 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 to use? What weapons can we use against this killer of souls? Well, time and time again, you have heard what to do, remember? And sometimes we hear perhaps through one year, it passes through another. But God, in his mercy, being patient with us, reminds us today again that today, perhaps the suggestions, you will take them to heart. And then when you realize the harm done to soul and body by this immoderate desire for fleshly pleasure, you will make the necessary effort to use those those, those, those suggestions. And here we have quite a number of suggestions on how to help to chastity. I think we mentioned this some time ago, some time ago. One of it is what? To train your will to, to rigorously control, to have control over your thoughts, all right? Because if you have an unbridled imagination, it will give rise to many temptations. But discipline your will, and it will be an effective uh, means to exclude dangerous thoughts. Discipline your imagination. And of course, you should regularly practice self-denial. Self self-denial. This may be done by what? Uh, modifying the senses in and like what abstaining from and uh, delicious food or going just um, going out for no reason things like that but staying one place performing a um, disagreeable task assuming you naturally or you are not inclined to doing dishes but you impose yourself the, the, the self, you deny yourself that pleasure by going out, out of your way to do dishes for the house for a week, for instance, and by patiently submitting to hardships that come your way. You, you should also de, de, develop some keen interest in some study, all right, or some work or some hobby that will take up your spare time. Most of the time, it's because of idleness and laziness that we give in to temptations to lust and impurity. So you should develop some interest in study. Pick up some book to read, Life of the Saint, or some history of the church, things like that. They become for you a way to overcome this temptation to things of lust. And of course, remember Sometime when you are tempted to lose, try to remember a very funny story and laugh well. A hearty laugh, right, often provides a very effective release from troublesome thoughts. And then always think also, think of the presence of God with you wherever you are and of Christ crucified and of hell. Today is the face of the impression of, of the stigmata of St. Francis. And so we are also invited to always keep before our eyes the, 
the five wounds of Christ. That would be for us a, a, a formidable instrument for us against bad thoughts and misleading thoughts. And you should also call to God for aid by short prayer. For instance, my Jesus, have mercy. When you see your thoughts drifting, say some prayer and call on God to help you. And recall that every temptation resisted is merit gained and every sin committed, though later forgiven, increases one's purgatory. Remember that by giving into temptations against purity, they are not lessened except for, that, for the moment. By yielding to them, they grow even more, in, uh, um, even more, all right? You do not quench them by satisfying them, but rather you increase them by trying to satisfy them. You should avoid being afraid or terrified at the idea of imputed attacking you. No, don't be afraid of that. They will attack you for sure, but say to yourself, if they come, I will simply resist them and thus increase my reward in heaven. Just cultivate a calm and serene attitude towards impure thoughts. And of course, decide beforehand when uh, decide beforehand when calm and untroubled by the temptation, the exact means which you will use during the temptation that are to come. For instance, you should learn handy songs that you can always sing when you, are, when you see your thought drifting in order to re rearrange your mind in the right way. All right? This will help you to keep your thoughts uh, in check. Okay, but apart from that, we have other means as helps to chastity. These include regular and frequent reception of the sacraments of penance and holy communion. One should, if possible, always confess to the same confessor. All right, and then there is what devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and to Saint Joseph. These devotions help you to cultivate purity. And then, of course, meditate often on the beauty of chastity and the degrading effect of impurity. Imagine if, for instance, your love for God is not strong enough to dis dis dissuade you from impurity. Think of the sickness that will come upon you and all of those, uh, all of those effects at least that should make you to, to abstain from impurity. But of course, that is not enough. We are saying that that can be a beginning part for you. And of course, you should avoid as far as possible the circumstances which have in the past led, one into, led you into sin or which your reason tells you will surely prove a source of temptation. Okay, remembering that to conquer the virtue of chastity is quite possible. Keep that in your mind, that for you to acquire the virtue of chastity is quite possible. Say that to yourself and be, be determined about it. So do not be discouraged by the number of persistency of the temptation. It might come to you over and over and over again, but Recall the promises of God. He said, God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able, but will make you also, uh, will make also with temptation issue that you may be able to bear it. So don't tell yourself that, oh, this temptation is too much for me. No, it is not too much for you it is possible for you to overcome that temptation. And then consider the long list of saints who shone by their purity, and then the vast multitude of Catholic men, women, and children in every part of the world today who are leading beautifully pure lives. 
think of priests, think of sisters, brothers, laymen, and women, boys and girls all around you in school and out of school who you see are examples of purity. And then bear in mind the words of St. Paul, he said, or uh, know you not that your members are the spirit, are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you are not your own? Think about that. You do not belong to yourself, you belong to God. And so you want to keep what belongs to God clean and pure. For you are bought with a great price, he says. And then make it a rule during the time when you are tempted in thought to quickly um, to quickly to use quick distractions right that imagine for instance so he said imagine that a fire has just broke out in the room close to you or that as you are there the bishop just walked in imagine the bishop just walked in that will certainly distract you and then as we mentioned earlier, think of, or uh, think of a funny story and 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 give yourself a good laughter, and or think of a plane falling on you as you are in that room or wherever you are. These are ways to distract your mind. All right. So we hear that our Lord healed a man today in the gospel of dropsy. Lost for us will be the dropsy that we are in need of being healed of. And today being our, the last day, our Lord is not a, afraid to heal us if we dispose ourselves to be healed by him. And so let us dispose ourselves today to be healed by him and he will heal us of our dropsy. Trust in God and he will not allow you to be tempted above your powers to resist. He is ready to give you his grace and help at all times. So remember that lust is like spiritual dropsy and Christ will heal you if you come near and stay near to him. All right, stay near to Christ in your desire, in your effort to imitate him, in your effort to cultivate virtue, and he will heal you. And of course, ask our lady to help you in your fight. Whenever you are tempted, call on her, as we, we heard in the last Sunday, call on her and say a Hail Mary, and she will obtain for you the grace you need so that you will be pure both in, in thought, in your speech, in your action. And in doing so, you prepare for yourself a happy place in heaven. For those that bless are those who are pure, for they shall see God. God bless you, the Holy Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>